Welcome to the Texas Football Talk. I'm your host, Jeremy Lockerbie. Once again, joined by my brother Clint in this episode, talking the cornerback position with first-year cornerbacks coach Terry Joseph. How you doing, brother? Hey, pretty good, man. You know, uh, just got done making a video talking about wide receivers. Obviously, we're going to talk about the guys that are going to be going up again in spring practice, and that's the uh, cornerbacks. Uh, I, I think on both sides of the ball, these guys need to – uh, there's some growth still left on both sides on both sides of those balls and with the wide receivers and the cornerbacks. I think bringing a guy in uh, like Terry Joseph, um, you know, from Notre Dame, who just, you know, obviously was part of a coaching staff that just took Notre Dame to a semifinal uh, in, in the in the CFP is, is important. Um, obviously, Steve, Sar Steve, Steve Sarkeesian seen something uh, with him when he was going against him, obviously, in the, the semifinal game with Alabama. They would, they would have him bring Terry Joseph. Um, into the fold on the 40 acres. So really, really excited about having him there. Um, obviously, some current concerns going into spring practice will be, um, you know, the departures of obviously Jalen Green from the 2018 class, who was, you know, on the, on the precipice of being a five-star, one of the top five cornerbacks in that class. Um, Xavier Alford, who was a safety, 100-yard um, landlord that obviously decided he wanted to uh, go to USC. And I think that had a lot to do with the coaching staff that was at the University of Texas, uh, maybe feeling comfortable about going back to going to, out to USC to be with that coaching staff. And then Kenyatta Watson, who would, I had penciled in as probably one of the starters uh, coming in uh, to the 2021 season, uh, transferred to uh, Georgia Tech. Uh, but we did get a transfer in in, in Darian Dunn uh, for McNeese me, me State. Uh, I think when they went after uh, Darian Dunn, I think they had seen what he had previously done in, in big games against Division One talent in the Big 12. Um, so I think when when they when he said, "Hey, we'll put all of our chickens in in the basket, basket, and try to get this guy um, to the forty acres," and, and that's where he is. And I think he has a uh, really a shot um, at, at being one of those starting cornerbacks for the University of Texas going coming out of spring practice, going into the fall. So, um, your thoughts, man, on the departures and in, in, in Terry Joseph? So yeah, Jalen Green. It surprised me that you would transfer out to Mississippi State in your senior year. But I think I look at Darian Dunn and Jalen Green as a one-for-one -one switch uh, because, again, Xavier Alford felt comfortable with the, with the previous secondary coach and decided to follow them out to, to USC with limited playing time on the 40 acres, if at all. And then Kenyatta Watson's from, from Georgia. Uh, so he's basically going back home to, to, to his home state uh, to play at Georgia Tech. So I'm kind of looking at this like a Darian Dunn for Jalen, Jalen Green switch. Uh, but, again, you got guys behind – you know, the, the, the basically senior-led group of Deshaun Jameson, Anthony Cook, and, and those guys with Chris Sattamore with a little bit of experience, but then you got Jade Barry and Keaton Crawford. So you have a mix of, of veterans, like you say, 2018 class is still here uh, with Jameson, Thompson, Cook. So there's plenty of experience there. I'm not – sorry, uh, Josh Thompson was not part of that class, but experience, he's a senior. Uh, uh, leading that group of, of defensive backs – and then a little bit of youth sprinkle behind them. Uh, when, I, when I look at that 2018 class, and, and I had an opportunity to meet some of these guys in person at the uh, U.S. Army All-American Bowl, uh, I, I kind of look back, and I want to probably look back over the next couple of years, obviously, when Jamison leaves and, um, you know, obviously, B.J. Foster being part of that group and DeMarvin Overshone being that other yeah. part of that group. When I look back at here in the next couple of years, I'm going to say, where did that 2018 class finish? Because that was, if not the one of the best – defensive back pools and recruiting that we've ever seen. Um, so when we look down the, down, down a couple of years uh, here, uh, when this ends uh, for these guys, you know, going into the NFL, I would like to see where they end uh, because there was five guys that came in uh, really, 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 really um, highly touted recruits. And, and, and currently, I think you said what three fifths are currently on the, yeah. on the roster. Two guys have currently left and, and, and obviously Stearns to, 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 Clarence to the NFL and Jalen Green um, taking off to, to Mississippi State, where he's probably going to link up with his um, his old cornerbacks coach that's there at Mississippi State. Yeah, Jason um, Washington. Jason Washington. Yeah, so yeah. three, so so three fifths of it, like you said, Overshown dropped down the linebacker from mm -hmm. uh, of that 2018 class. But what got me thinking us putting these videos back to back uh, with that wide receiver class, the 2019 class of of Jordan Whittington and, and Jake Smith, and then the 18 class being Josh Moore. This is really a year where these guys can really push each other. With the 19 receiver class along with Josh Moore can really push that 2018. What's left of that 2018 defensive backcourt, uh, primarily Cook and Jamison. Because, uh, again, I overshone slid 
from safety back to, to linebacker. And then you lost, like you said, Caden Stearns to the NFL and then Jalen Green to transfer. But that was the five guys who came in together. Now you have Overshone, Cook, and Jamison left. But I really look for that 19 group of receivers along with Josh Moore to really challenge uh, Jamison and Cook this year, along with Adam Moore, to get them better. Like that sharp iron, sharp and iron. If, if the receiver course can stay healthy, if the defensive backs can stay healthy, I really think they can push each other to be great this year. Yeah. And then we got a, we got a pretty good um, pool of, of obviously um, uh, safeties in this 2021 class with Jameer Johnson out of Pal Pasadena, California. Um, tough, gritty, uh, lengthy cornerback uh, area out of Pasadena, California. And then uh, obviously Ishmael Ibrahim um, out of the Dallas, Dallas Fort Worth area. Uh, again, tall, lean guy that doesn't mind putting his hands on you. And then Michael Taff out of the Austin, Texas, out of Austin, Texas, uh, out of Austin West Lake, uh, brought him on as a, I want to say a um, uh, for walk on, preferred walk on uh, from that from that uh, state championship team. Um, so really, it's, really excited about. Go ahead, Jeremy. Yeah, just these three guys are really, really different. When we did a commitment corner on Jameer Johnson, I just remember him being able. to like he, he reminds me of Deshaun Jameson. I think we comped him to Deshaun Jameson with his ball skills, like being in the mm -hmm. right place and be able to make plays in the ball. Whereas Ishmael Ibrahim is your, is your lanky long arm, uh, strictly a cover corner. Like he, 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 you will not almost like a Jalen Ramsey, not saying he is Jalen Ramsey, but that type of body type where long arms, uh, link allows him to, 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 to make mistakes because he can, he can make up for it with, with getting in the way with his, with his body. And then Michael Taft, who's been in like big game after big game after big game at Westlake and performed against the, the best quarterbacks. You know, he plays against Kate Klubnik in practice and then he's in the state championship game against, you know, Quinn Ewers and South Lake. And you're like, who is this guy making all these plays on defense? Mm -hmm. And you were lucky enough that he was right down the street and you're able to get him, like you said, without, without having to give him a scholarship. But maybe he can be one of these guys who, who walks in, like a Dylan Haynes a couple of years ago in, in the secondary and earns that scholarship by, by production at, on the 40 acres. So three really, really different type guys. But again, adding depth to what is a really, really small position group at this point with the, with the, with the, with the group that's, that has a lot of experience, which is Jamison Thompson. Adam Moore and Cook, and then you got these young kids with J the, the freshman last year, now sophomores with Keaton Crawford and Jaden Barron, and then the three freshmen coming in. So you got like five upperclassmen, and then five what would be pretty much uh, in the old school would be redshirt freshmen with Jade Barron and, and, Kate, and, and Kate and Cro Keaton Crawford getting a little bit of playing time, but not so much. So yeah. And don't forget, Darian Dunn is 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 you know obviously Thank one of those so one of those guys one of those one of those guys as well. It's sometimes yeah. it, you have the, the transfers in kind of sneak in here, and they when you get used to the same guys over and over again, they kind of sneak in here. But I'm telling you, um, he's going to bring a lot of competition to that room, uh, and, and and I think that's what's important really going into the 2020 season is you're breeding competition, you're making guys even better. Um, uh, so when you're looking at obviously returning starters in, in games played, go ahead, Jeremy. You had some bad? No, what Darren Dunn also could allow you to do. I'm just looking at my, my notes here, but and I don't have it written down, but what Darren Dunn can allow you to do is if he comes in and takes one of those corner positions, it allows you to move Josh Thompson, who's experienced at safety, to maybe move back and take one of those safety spots now that Montreal Estelle is going on the offensive side of the ball. You know what you got, you know, in a young Jaron Thompson. You know what you got in, in, a, in a not don't know what you got, but you have athletes like Tyler Owen, Sharon Thompson. We'll talk about safety a little bit later. But I think what it allows you to do if you if you have Darian Dunn, Deshaun Jameson, Anthony Cook, and Chris Adamora, and then the younger kids, uh, Keaton Crawford and Jade Jade Barron to play the cornerback position, it allows you to, to give Josh Thompson that Swiss Army knife flexibility to to find yeah. the best position on the field for him. Whereas last year he was strictly a corner because you had Stearns and Brown back there as your safeties but now that they moved on you know that may give you his him an opportunity to back up and i knew when we went into this podcast you we weren't you weren't going to be able to talk about john thompson without saying swiss army knife i, I knew it when we come when we started this video i knew exactly what you're going to say because that's who he is you know in 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 not to, to to get into to moving parts or whatever but it does give him an opportunity to go play safety and if you need to spin down one of those bigger safeties to to some of those positions of need um there in the front seven it's it's also a possibility uh, like a Tyler Owens. Rip, Tyler Owens, yeah. But we'll get into really the safeties and, and the linebackers in, a, in another podcast. Um, but, yeah, that, that is definitely a one move that you could possibly make. To me, Deshaun, Jason, Deshaun Jameson doesn't get enough hype. I think he is going to be 
probably one of the better cornerbacks coming out of the 2020 season when it's 2021, 2021 seasons when it's all said and done. I truly do. I think he could be a shutdown corner. I think he is that athletically ta talented. I think the only thing that that not slows him down because he's fast, but I'm going to probably say his height, just kind yeah. of where his height's at right now. But I'm but I don't think that's a detriment detriment to him because we've seen him go up and make plays on the ball against mm -hmm. larger receivers. I'd be shocked if he's not at least second team All Big Twelve and, and competing for that All Big Twelve you know cornerback position um, this year because he, the swag is there, the playmaking ability is there, um, yeah, just consistency because uh, you've seen it, you've seen it in flashes, and, and I know he can be that consistent lockdown corner but like you said what probably is a detriment to him is the 510 um yeah if he was if he was six it, foot one it would be a thing one thing if we don't bring it up we'll, we'll see it in the comments probably a thousand times if we don't bring it up and that's play making ability be able to turn yes. your head and make a play on the ball and i think we haven't seen enough over the last last couple of years but if you go back and look at pk's defenses at university of washington i think in one season they had 28 20 something uh interceptions um, and I think his average of interceptions per year in his defense is really, really high. Um, so I know that if we didn't bring that up about them turning their heads, that playmaking ability, uh, I know that we were probably going to see a dozen comments in, in the comments section of this podcast. So that is something definitely that we that, that obviously need to work on um, through the spring, into the summer, into the fall. And that's really turning your head and making plays on the ball. Because I think that a lot of times, especially last year, um, as the season went on, you could see that these 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 defensive backs were in the right place. Um, yeah. They were always in the right place. They were think they didn't have they they stopped thinking so much. They were just they they were playing. And I think we have to get back to that. You know, uh, make it simple. They should know where they're going to be at. So when it's time to make a play on the ball, there's not they're not overthinking it and actually just making a play on the ball. That is uh, that's that that is is put yourself in the right position to where the ball's in the air and you see the wide receiver's eyes get big that you yeah. don't stress out that you don't yeah. grab that you don't you know, face guard, or you, like you said, you turn, turn your, and it's easier said than done, but turn your head towards the football and make a play on the ball going through the receiver. Cause if you're playing the ball, you're not going to get called, but just don't yep. freak out in those moments, but you find yourself freaking out when you're not in position. So like you said, get in position, trust, trust, trust your instincts, trust your talent, get where you need to be. And then, and then don't make, don't make a bad play when the ball's in the air. And which kind of so leads me? us to, to, to one of my points is with the inexperience at safety and the experience at corner, uh, where do you see PK? And we probably don't know this yet. It's probably an open question for, for, for guys to talk about in the comment section is, is the strength of the defense. I believe in as far as experience is concerned is in the cornerback position. So do you feel like PK will go with a more bump and run, you know, leave my guys on an Island, uh, not give too much help from the safety or, or do you see him, you know, doubling down safeties over the top, you know, with Tampa two, Type defense. Uh, I, I think. I think to me, it, it just depends on your front seven and what you're going to do with your front seven. Obviously, if you're going to try to get be aggressive and try to get a pass rush, uh, then you're probably going to put your guys up on on the line to try to hands. you know obviously uh, you know put hands on them and get them off the the get, you know get these receivers off their uh, routes. Uh, that's what you kind of see. Um, and I can tell you that to me, the front seven is probably the, the strongest it's been in a while, um, especially with that front four, front three, front four. Uh, so I, I think it's going to be more um, on the ball, uh, get your hands on these receivers, reroute them off their routes, um, and, and then uh, make plays on the ball um, if you're looking at it. But, you know, obviously with PK, just like Steve Sarkeesian's um, offense, you're probably going to see them line up on, you know, obviously line up on the receiver and line off off the receiver and see some Tampa too. Right. Um, you know, cover two and so on and so forth. So I think it's really an open question at this particular point, uh, which I kind of like, cause it's, it, it's going to be more like a surprise when you see it. Um, it. You know, obviously there'll be some rumblings on how, what they're doing on defense uh, coming out of spring practice. Uh, but to me, uh, I'm probably excited about this, the, probably the nickel corner position when you're talking, you know, two, two guys like Chris Adamore and Anthony Cook, they're probably going to be asked to do the same that Buda Baker did um, in, in PK's defense in, in Washington. Um, and that's be around the ball all the time, making plays, coming down heel, but also be able to make a play on the ball uh, when it's necessary. Um, so they're going to be asked to do a lot. I'm excited about those two guys. Um, I think they are both competitive, hungry guys, and, and we'll see what happens. The thing about really going into this spring, both on the offensive side of the ball and the defensive side of the ball, I, I don't think there's any projected starters. 
I think everybody has to start over. Everybody earns their position. And whoever is the best guys coming out of spring into the fall, uh, ready for that first game, are the ones who are going to start. And that's what I like about it the most right now is that you literally have raced everything that you've done over the last three years. Everybody's got to come out and compete for a position. If they're net ready to play, if they're not ready to practice, um, then somebody else is going to take their spot. Yeah, when you, start describing, about. when you start describing Buda Baker and being around the football, I wrote down Foster, B.J. Foster. Yeah. Like yeah. in P.K.'s defense, I think he has a – and we'll talk about this on the safety podcast, but we're kind of in that area right now. Um, I think he can make a jump similar to DeMarvey and Overshone under Chris Ash. I think B.J. Foster could make as large a leap under P.K.'s defense this year. I think he's – He's going to, they're going to have, like you said, that Buda Baker, Tyron Matthew, Honey Bat, like, and, and, and that's, I asked the question because I know what it looks like. It's going to look hopefully a whole lot like Chris Ash's defense did last year. It's what a quarterback sees pre-snap. He's not going to see when he, once he snaps mm-hmm. the ball. Like you said, they're going to walk up on these wide receivers and at the snap of the ball, they're going to back off or they're going to be back off and at, at down set, they're going to walk up on these receivers and the corners and the safeties are going to peel back and, and, and just just disguise, uh, just a multiple fronts, versatility across the board. Because uh, like you said, they have the, 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 the talent is there to fit multiple schemes if they want to try it. Uh, it's just I about getting these guys' I, experience. I don't think it's down set anymore. I think it's half clap. Yeah, yeah. But I think it's half clap. You know what I mean. But I know, but I don't know I don't, I don't if there's down set anymore. I think it's maybe half clap now. You know, half clap. Yeah, half clap. <laughs> you know, uh, I think it's half clap and then clap. Uh, I think that's your down set. I don't even know if anybody says those things anymore. I don't you know, think they, they do either. And hand signs and stuff, but I don't think anybody really does that anymore, which is pretty cool, man. That tells you how old school we are, man. You know, no, you know, no. It's cool. But yeah, go ahead, Jerry. No, just just that is that you, once you break the huddle, if you, if you even huddle anymore, because that's yeah. that's a thing in the past too. Once you once you break out in the positions that you show something pre-snap that, you, that you're disguising going post-snap and like I said, I, he's, a, he's a silent assassin, PK. That's what they say. And, and that's that's the kind of guy I want to lead my defense. Like a guy that's, that understands his talent, that's going to gonna fit a scheme to his talent and going to show the quarterback and the offensive coordinator and the opposing team as many different looks as they possibly can so that they're I, not I ready to play ball. Because what I think silent assassin, I think, uh, I think uh, you know, Joseph Asai, Oklahoma State, you know, uh, you know, sack, um blitz me, on fourth down yeah yeah that that to me Zero that's coverage oh that gets me excited that gets me really yeah. excited because it's 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 out of the blue it's not it's not i'm showing my hand and we're doing it Forcing. you know what i'm saying it's yeah. like oh You're i didn't i didn't realize i didn't realize that was about to happen uh which right. i think is important so hey man if you guys aren't excited about spring practice uh get excited about spring practice man it, it got a whole new coaching staff these guys are going to be hungry they're going to be competitive they're going to be they're going to be fighting for positions uh do you want to get projected starters yeah, I think, I, yeah. Well, I, I, th- I think we know that or I believe that the starters on in quarterback are going to be uh, Deshaun James and Anthony Cook and, and Chris Adamora. Of course, on the other side, if, if they choose to move Josh Thompson back to safety, if not, then I see Deshaun James and Josh Thompson being your boundary corners. And then again, like last year, Chris Adamora and, and Anthony Cook fighting out for that slot corner position. Uh, really? That's currently the way I see okay. it. I do. Okay. Okay. I, I think yeah. experience wins out. I do. I think experience wins out this year. And, and, and you go with what you know. And those guys have proven that, like I said, Jameson has 18 starts, Thompson 12 starts, uh, Adam Moore nine starts, and, and Cook seven starts. So it's going to be a combination yeah. of those four guys. I think there's some young talent and some transfer young talent that are there. I'm sorry, hungry. Darian Dunn. And, and it's, a no, it's, okay. it's all good. It, it, but again, it's, it's, it, there's young talent and there's transfers that are transferred in that are going to try to fight for these positions. And that's what you want to happen. Um, so to me, it's really between jo- Deshaun Jameson, Josh Thompson, uh, against Chris Adamore and Anthony Cook for finding that position. And I think Darian Dunn is probably going to give Josh Thompson all the all all the comp that he wants for that for that for that cornerback position over there. But hey, we appreciate you listening to this podcast as always. Again, get excited about where we're currently at. Get excited about this new coaching staff. Uh, you know, you can find us on Twitter at TX Football Talk, on Facebook at Texas Football Talk, and Instagram at Texas Football Talk. We appreciate you listening. As always, please hit that subscribe button. If you haven't liked the subscribe button, and please hit that like button. We appreciate you, as always, and hook them. Hook them.